All righty, righty. Thank you very much for coming to this uh, third or fourth, I should keep track, but I don't, of uh, Tangle Tuesdays. Um, if you don't know me, I'm Loretta, and I'm a Zen Tangle teacher and a soul collage facilitator and all around art growl, and uh, been doing art for a long time and teaching art for a very long time and teaching art online for the past year. And uh, I welcome you to this uh, session. Um, we're gonna start tonight, I always start my classes with a little relaxation exercise that you can do that's not Zentango related, but related to relaxing, which is what we're trying to do, um, and calming ourselves down. So there's something um, that you might wanna look at if you don't know it already, and it's called Jin Shin Jitsu. And uh, it's very old form of sort of Japanese acupressure. Uh, it's very easy and very gentle and you can do it anywhere. Uh, so we're gonna do one. One thing that I noticed when I work on the computer is this right in here. My neck gets so tight and so sore. So we're gonna attend to that because I bet you we've been all on the computer, probably a lot, or iPads with the text neck and all that. So we're gonna do a little bit of that. And I will spell it eventually, Lisa. <laughs> I'd have to look it up first. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna take, you're gonna first sort of feel around here and feel what side feels tighter. What's, what's you know, what's the, What's the part of your, you know, are they both the same or you just feel and see if you can feel what side's tighter than the other. There'll be one. There's always one that's a little tighter. And whatever side that is, you're going to take your opposite hand and put it right there on top. Just lay it there. You don't have to push. In fact, this is all about just laying your hand on. And then the other hand, you're going to put under your left cheek, the lower cheek, okay? So for me, it's the left one. So for you, if you're doing your other shoulder, it would be the other hand. So the other hand goes under that sit bone, the left hand side or under that hip. And we're just going to sit here and you can do this and talk. You can do this and watch television, whatever you like to do but we're just gonna breathe. We're just gonna breathe for a few seconds and just hold this posture. And uh, if you want to, you can think of some far away place in your mind that is where you like to go, that is still, that is peaceful, that is where you feel most calm and easy. So I invite you to close your eyes and just go to that place in your mind because we can't go, most of us, right now to that place. So we'll go there in our minds. And just breathe lightly and deeply and gently. And let the, your hand, the heat of your hand is going to, just imagine it melting those muscles, melting the tension, the heat of your hand, just like an iron, just getting in there and just letting everything go. Okay. So that gives you a taste. You would probably hold it for like two minutes. Um, you'll feel, until you feel like a release, like a, a sigh of the muscle. And then you can do the other side the same way. So you do the, just switch over. And it's just a lovely way to relax and uh, take it easy. So we're gonna start, I'm gonna switch the camera over to my document camera, so just hold tight. I also wanna mention that Zoom had a little thing out today that said, because of the number of users, their 
connectivity might be a little off. So if you get kicked out, just try to come back in again. If you find uh, you can't see yourself on the video, well, you may not have enough bandwidth, but if you can see me and you can hear, that's all that you need to do. So come along to, over to the hover cam. All right, everybody see that little hand right there? Good. Okay. So tonight you need any piece of paper. It doesn't have to be special paper. I'm using Strathmore mixed media paper for demoing on because I can make it larger. And you can of course use the Zentangle tile. And before I start, I have some announcements. I forgot. All right. Okay. So first of all, to let you know on May 2nd, um, Nancy Donmauer and I have cobbled together a workshop. Uh, it's from 9 a.m. till noon. It's called Tangled Together. All the proceeds go to our respective food banks. She will be doing the classical Zentangle tile to warm us all up uh, on the first, and then we'll have a good long break. And then I will be showing you how to splash color around. And we're going to be using um, stuff that you've got around. So if you've got watercolors or acrylics or fluid inks, you can do this. And this is what we're going to do. So just to give you an idea, sort of splashing around some inks and then working with other Zentangle designs to come up with some really funky um, otherworldly florals. So that's what we're going to do. That's May 9th. And if you're interested, let myself or Nancy know there's just a couple of spots left and we might open up some more because we're trying to make money for the food bank. So the better, um, more people, the better. The second thing is I made the date today um, if you're not familiar with that, I have been teaching something called Tangle Town online for the past year. I took a break for a while because you get, you know, tired of stuff. And then um, I combined it with these stacked tangles. So we're going to learn how to do these little funky houses with the stacked tangles. It's not going to be this design, but it will be similar. And maybe with some botanicals flowing, thrown in, I'm not sure, but it's going to be really fun. So that's on May the 9th, um, Saturday, from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Uh, Pacific time. The cost is $25 US or 35 Canadian, roughly. Well, that's, you know, so I'll put it in as Canadian dollars, 35 Canadian, because I'm in Canada. And then whatever it is when you buy it, whatever the rate is, will be, but it's around 25 bucks. And also to let you know that on Facebook, I today created a Tangle Tuesday group page. And Gretchen, I'll answer your question in a little while. Um, and so if you want to, it's an open, I didn't want to have to moderate it greatly. So, <laughs> so it's an open group. So anybody can to join it and you can put your Tangle Tuesday tiles on their photos of them. Okay, so now we'll start. So if you have a tile, great. If you have a piece of paper, I'll show you from just on a piece of paper. Anytime you need me to, um, Go slower, repeat, not talk so fast, shut up, whatever, let me know. Okay, so I'm just going to do, an ex don't do this part, this is just my tile. So it's large, so that, oops, oh that's nice, so that, we'll just incorporate that. <laughs> okay, tonight we really don't have a string. We're going to start with a tangle in the corner. And um, this tangle is one that I developed uh, a few years ago, and it's called Zales, and I'll spell that for you, I-L-Z. And it's because my husband and I are both sailors. So and it has a sail kind of look to it. So I'm going to start in the corner. I'm using a Micron PN. You can use whatever color, pen, pencil, whatever you'd like doesn't matter. Um, 
just feel comfortable with whatever tool you want. Make sure you're comfortable with it. Look after you first. Okay, so then we're going to start, I'm gonna start here in this corner with this kind of C shape coming down just like a wave. And then we're going to bring one line down and another line down like that. And these shapes are going to interlock. So we're going to do one this way and I'm going to fly over and bring it out this way. And then you're going to turn, you can turn the tile or your paper, whichever way you'd like, so that it's comfortable for you. And I'm going to move something because that's not comfortable. Hang on while I make some arrangements here. Okay. And then another one here. So it's growing out of the corner. And I'm going to put another one over here. Have that line come down and over there. We're just going to do a few in the corner. So they're about, you know, that big. I don't know, a quarter the height of your tile. And then we're going to do a few over here, but they're not going to be as crowded. Then I'm going to put in some little orbs in these spaces here. And that's optional. And maybe some here, I'm going to stack some up down here. And over here. little pearls. <clears throat> I think I'll put one over there. You put them wherever you feel. And if you don't feel, don't put them. So the last two um, classes we've done, we've included words and we're going to do that tonight. And I, I think that what we're experiencing now worldwide requires words. I think it requires the beauty of no words as well. So I invite you to do whatever you'd like. If you want to incorporate words, I'm going to show you how. If you don't want to, you don't have to. If you want more blank spaces and more negative space, you need more room, then let me know. Sorry about let me know, but just go ahead and do that. Um, it's really quite free form tonight. I don't really have, I'm not big on rules anyway. So, okay. So I'm going to do these, we're going to do these bands. And they're going to come out of here. I'm going to draw down, it's easier for me. And another one there. And then I'm going to just do a little bit of a space right there. So we're going to put some color in there or shading. <clears throat> and another one. And notice that they're different. They're not, they're different widths. They're not uniform. And I encourage you to try that. But if you like things to be spaced exactly, that's okay. 
I'm going to add another little thing here, just a, another space there. So you can do as many as you want. If you only want to do three or four, you can do that. Um, it's up to you. And while you're catching up here, I'm going to check out the chat here and answer some questions. Okay. All right. Spell that. Loretta, could you move yep. your arm? Pardon me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Um, I'm going to try to type one handed. It's Look it up on my phone. Okay. Hi, Mary. Hi. How are you, Loretta? I'm good. How are you? I'm We're just sorry, I'm late. <laughs> That's okay. No worries. <laughs> That's okay. I'm sure you'll easily catch up. That's what we've done so far. Okay. So if you're just joining us, we're doing, um, we're growing the tangle from the corner. And so we started with the tangle zales, which is kind of looks like a sail. And then we have some another bit in the corner there and some orbs or like little pearls in there. And then some lines coming off and some of the lines are bisected from other lines that we're going to have for spaces. So we're going to do bands of tangles in here. Okay, how's everybody doing? Does anybody uh, need more time? I can't see everyone, but if you need more time, you're good. Okay, so um, I'm going to be working in black initially and then bringing in the color. But if you want to work with color right from the get go, then go for it. Okay, um, and I'll also show you the shading if you're not going to work with color at all, which is just fine too. So while you're doing the tangling, I want you to think of a word or maybe two words that would be something that you would want to send out to the world right now. What word of encouragement 
or words of encouragement would you like to send out? If you could send out a word to the whole world at this time, what would it be? So maybe think about that while we're tangling. It may not be something that you want to put on the front. It might be something you want to put on the back. So don't feel that you have to be a calligrapher or something to do this. And I'm going to show you a way to do it really easily anyway, because uh, I am no calligrapher. Trust me. Not in, my, not in my DNA. So I'm going to start with um, the first one up here. I'm going to start up here. I'm going to turn my piece of paper. I'm going to bisect this line. Now, this is one that um, Nancy Donmauer taught me, so I really like it. And it's a way to um, do Knightsbridge. So I'm just going to bisect it and then bisect it again vertically. Let me bring my another. Okay. And where I want the black to be, because I want to do it in Knightsbridge, do, 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 I'm going to put a little dot so I don't get confused because, well, I get confused. Okay. And I'm going to take a um, fatter nib pen because I'm kind of, well, impatient when it comes to black. So right now, I have a Faber Castell pit pen in black. It is an M for, I assume, medium. And um, I'm just going to go in there in black where the little dots are. But if you don't want to do that and you want to put another tangle in there instead, you are welcome to do so. As we know, it's not really about the product at all. It's about the process of doing it. So I'm just puddling that in there with little circles as opposed to back and forth. Covers a little bit better on the paper. Design-wise, I decided to choose a tangle that is um, has more heaviness to it, um, just you know, sort of lock in the edge, just so you know where my brain goes, what it thinks of. Oh, I got that wrong. Oh, well, we're going to go with that. I put the dot in the wrong one. Huh, funny. Funny me. We're going to just go with that tonight and just put dots in every open one then. So the beauty of Zentangle I'm going to make this dark up here. Okay, 
So if you want to do some shading or add color, you're welcome to. So I'll just show you a little bit of shading here. So we're going to shade a little bit here where these little sail shapes overlap. I've got my torch on. And there, I'm getting a little dimension. Give you an idea, or some down here maybe as well. And then for color tonight, I'm using the pit pens again. I really like them. Um, they have bold color. They mix well. Uh, they play well with other colors and other medium. Uh, this is a brush tip, which I like because it's really fine at the end. So you can do little places. So I'll just give you an example here. I'll just do a little place in here. This is with purple. I'm going right over what I did, but that's okay. And uh, it really is lovely. I like them a lot. And they last a long time. Goodness, I probably have had this set for eight or nine years. Um, and it wasn't, if I remember correctly, it wasn't too expensive. I think I got it at my local art store, and they come in this really cool box, which is kind of nifty. And as long as you keep the caps on, they'll last a long time. And this other thing this box does is it folds back so that it will, well, we can see that here, but it'll stand up and be at an angle. So nifty, nifty stuff. Okay, how's everybody doing? If you need more time, unmute and let me know, please. Otherwise, we'll continue on. Now, if you've thought of a word, you might want to think where you want the word or words. And if you, you know, depending how long the word is, you might want to pick one of the longer spots to put it in. And just remember, or maybe put a pencil mark of where you want the word to be. So I'm gonna put my word right here. So I'm just gonna X right there really lightly um, so that I remember this is where it was and I don't want to put a tangle in there. I wanna put a word in there. If you do not wanna put a word in there, you do not have to. It's not required on the voyage. Okay, so we're gonna do the next one, which is snail. And I know we've done it before, but I like it. So we're doing it again. And uh, it's just one I really enjoy. So it's like Creton, which the co with the coils, but one coil comes off another coil. And go really slowly, because that's what our nervous system really likes. It likes to go slow, thank you very much. I'm going to get bigger as I get to more space. And here I am, and I could go over the edge if I want, or I can come there. So I'm just going to go there. And then in this space, I'm going to do little triangles. You could black them in if you want. You could put little dots in there instead. Really is up to you of how you want to play with it. Because that's what we're doing. We're playing tonight or this morning or this afternoon, wherever you are. And then I'm going to use a little color in there. So I've got this blue, and I'm going to color in these little spots with the pit pen. And then if you've got, where did I put it? 
I had it before. I moved stuff around to make room for the laptop and then I, I think I have it. I do, yay. So I've got some moon glow jelly rolls and I'm just gonna make sure it works. Oh, yay, it does, okay. Small victory. And I'm just going to put a little dot of this super bright pink in here with that. And you could do that now or later if you want, if you have jelly rolls to go in and pretty it up. And while I'm here, I think I'm gonna do these uh, pearls in this pink as well. So in the chat, I put a um, couple of photos of um, the two upcoming events, the Tangle Together Benefit for the Food Bank on May the 2nd, and then my class, um, Tangle Town Home, Tangle Town Town at Home on May the 9th, both on Saturday morning class, Saturday Pacific time. Okay, so we go on, we ready to go. Anybody who needs more time, let me know. You can raise your hand as well if you see that as a little hand raised thing along the bottom of your screen. And if you have an iPad, it'll be under the more. And you just stick your little finger up there or your little hand raise and just like that. And then I'll know you need more time, but nobody's doing that, so that's good. Okay. So then let's do another one. And this one, I don't know. I don't, if, it, if it had a name, it probably has a name somewhere, but I don't remember what it is. I've given up on trying to remember them all and it's almost impossible to find them now because there's so many. So this starts with a wavy line. And I missed a spot there. Everyone was going to start it here anyway. I'll come back to that open spot eventually. And then we're going to just curve off that line. It's like a ribbon. Think about how you're sitting. I just reminded myself because I'm leaning over my work like I'm a vulture. That's no good for my neck. So if you can sit so that if you're in the chair that you're actually being supported by the chair. If there's a back on it that's supporting you. And you're sitting straight to your work, not sideways. We do this sideways thing and then we sort of look under so if you can try to sit straight to your work and if you need to go forward to hinge at the hips not the upper back not the neck but at the hips so that you're you're using your abdominal muscles it's much easier on your back okay so then i'm just going to do little orbs in here Oops, that wasn't supposed to be up there. So we'll just do that so you know. Do another one there. Pretty simple tangle, but really quite effective. And you could certainly embellish it more if you'd like. I've got this orange I want to use been an orangey kind of day. So I'm going to go in there and do some orange. And if you want, you can also certainly shade it. Do that.
you don't have a tortillon, which is one of these things, you could use a little cotton ball. You could use your finger. Fingers work. Nancy, this is Lisa. I have a friend that I'm doing some little group classes with, and she's mm -hmm. she's using a chopstick as her tortillon. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, that's, I wonder how that does to the paper, but whatever works. You know, bamboo should be, if it's bamboo, it's probably pretty soft. A Q-tip, that'll work too. In fact, I have some. Let me see how it works. Since I'm here in my studio with all my stuff, and I have Q-tips. See how that works. I'll start and see. Just, you know, I haven't ever used a Q-tip for this purpose. I use them all the time for different projects. We'll just see how it does. Well, actually not bad. Not too bad. It has a hard time, really. But better than your finger, I suppose, if you want to keep clean. Okay, I see people's heads are still down, so we're going to give you a couple of minutes to catch up. Rohini said that she read on one of the pages yesterday that eyeshadow applicators work very well as, as a tortillon. Very good idea. Okay. Hmm. I just happen to have some of those too, which I use, um, excuse the noise, but I use it for my, um, I don't have the thing, but I use them for my pastels, pan pastels. I'm just going to open it up and see if that works. Keeping it real. Goodness gracious, talk about packaging. Holy mackerel. Okay. So usually there's a little stick this goes on just to see if it works. I don't know where that is. But yeah, it's doing pretty good. So that's possible. Super cheap these things are. Um, yeah. At the cosmetic counter or your local drugstore, which is open now. Oh, these days, thank goodness. Okay, and let's go to the next one. So I'm going to go up here because I kind of missed that one. And this is like, I call it full moon instead of crescent moon. And again, I don't know the name, but um, I'm going to use, go back to my PN pen and let's do a little circle, a little orb, and then a larger circle around it and then a little ways away another little orb little circle and another circle around it and then another one here and another circle around it you can blacken your little orb there your little inner circle if you'd like and i'm just going to keep drawing the circle here just going around to each one individually and drawing a ring around the moon. And where it doesn't fit, of course, I'll fly over, pick it up on the other side.
I can always tell days where I've done a lot of computer work, like I did today, is that my lines are not as crisp and clear as they usually are because my hands are tired. That's basically it. Then I'm going to keep going here and where the line comes in and just pick it up. And come over here and drop it down here. Then I've got some, I'm just going to pretend there's one over here. And I'll shade this one and show you some shading. Shade in here and here a little bit. And I think online um, I have seen it. So it's somewhere. I'm sure there's a YouTube video. There's a YouTube video for practically everything now um, on how to make these out of paper. So you can also make them. And uh, I'm not sure how long they last, but there is a will, there's a way. I'm going to bring this color down a little bit here. I've got this blue going. So this week, well, actually, it would be a few weeks ago, we installed a critter cam. So where we live, let's back up. We live in a very small village, 1,400 people, in a valley surrounded by hills and mountains. And behind us is a, a small, well, forest. And then up, it goes up a slope. And in that slope, there's a cow pasture. But there's no people back there, just a bunch of cows <laughs> and, and wild animals. So we decided to put in a trail camera to see what we had. And so we've been checking it um, a couple of times. And last week we were so excited because we brought the chip home and we looked it up on the computer and it only showed like the last few seconds of this nighttime shot. That's the first thing we saw. And we saw this very long cat-like tail. And so, I mean, we were jumping up and down. We thought it was a cougar. We were so excited. And I mean, I was just, I couldn't believe it. I said, we got a cougar, got a cougar. Because we know there are cougars behind us and coyotes and bears and all the other things and deer. And, um, then my husband said, well, let's see, let's go back to the beginning of the, cl of the clip. And uh, so we did, and it was, it was a tabby cat. <laughs> it was a very big tabby cat, though I must admit. <laughs> but anyway, it's funny how the eye is fooled and how quickly you get excited over little things when you've been in the house a lot. Okay, how are we doing? Ready to go to the next one? Okay, so here's another one. We're going to bisect one of your lines here. I'm going to take this one here because remember, I'm going to write a word in there or maybe a series of words. I don't know yet. And then we're going to, I'm just going to do a whole circle here where I have room. Just like a whole note. If you play an instrument, like a whole note on music, sheet music. Or an Easter egg, the kinder eggs, the ones that split in the middle. And I must admit this year, for some reason, we have eaten a lot of chocolate, a lot of Easter eggs. We don't usually 
eat as many, but we certainly are now. It'll be sad when we don't have that little Easter egg after a meal. So again, I'm going to alternate where I want things to be. So I'm going to put in a little Greek key here. And you can do it starting from the inside, or so the outside, blah, blah, to the inside. Then I'm going to do one down here. So I'm going to alternate. I'm going to fly over and pick it up on the other side. The nice thing about this design is that you can really, you know, do anything, any tangle on these ribbons. And when I was thinking about the design, I was thinking about how we're going through waves. Um, some days I am well fired and I get lots to, to, done. Some mornings I wake up, uh, like this morning was odd. I woke up um, and I don't usually pay attention to the news in the morning. I usually wait till the afternoon and I and I'll read it for like 10 minutes like okay it's the same as yesterday but slightly different. Um, and but for some reason I looked at it this morning on my iPad and it just well that, that was it. I was like oh man that was not good. Um, so but eventually, you know, my mood changed and my energy came back to being a little more upbeat. And then another day will go come by and it'll be, what did I do today? Not much. I don't know. <laughs> I ate. I remember that. I ate a lot, usually. Um, so it's interesting how we all behave and how this pandemic affects people. And I think what's really important is that we remember we're human and that we are going to go through these ups and downs and ins and outs and probably for a very long time, not just while we're being um, cloistered, but perhaps long after we will be affected. And to give yourself the space and the time to feel these things. They're very real. And it's interesting. Um, I got a podcast from somebody I follow who is an expert on, on the nervous system. And what they found out is that people that have lived, especially in their young lives, under a lot of stress and strain in their family situation, when things like this happen, they actually thrive. They actually do better. They do physically and mentally better because this is the type of scenario they're used to functioning in. It may not be a healthy situation, but they're just really good at it. This is, you know, really good. So it's, it's interesting to see what we do. And I'm going to do a little triangle here. Everybody has a different take on what's happening. And one thing I noticed, and I think I shared last week that I was getting really angry and I, you know, rageful angry and quick to anger, especially at things that I saw and thought were really stupid and um, stupid behavior by people, irresponsible behavior. But that was a phase. I think that was just part of um, facing the trauma of what we're experiencing 
and it it just and it ended i did a lot of work to try to alleviate that a lot of breath work and that really helped but it, it just faded into maybe more of a um acceptance so perhaps it was resistance on my part and now it's more of acceptance that this is the way things are right now so how are we doing are we good so here you can do some coloring in here as well i'm going to take um this purple back and or violet and go in here and do some violet you can alternate colors or just do shading or just do line drawing. Keep it simple if you wish. I've got my super pink here. I'm going to put that in there. I find adding color to anything very satisfying. I like shading as well i love shading um but i really i like color always have anybody have any questions they need to ask in while we're doing what we're doing So Gretchen asked where the pictures mentioned are posted. I sent them to everyone. So if you scroll up in the um, chat thing, the chat room, scroll up, you should see it. One is a JPEG for Tangletown at home. And another one is uh, just, it's the one above that. It does have no name. It starts with 9286638. It's also another JPEG. So if you open those, it'll be there, I hope. Okay, sad me, I don't see anything. Well, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, I will see if I can share them another way. Um, so if you don't mind, I'm going to see if I can do this. And the other questions were, are you using the pit pens to shade or spread pen the pencil sometimes? I am using the pencil for shading tonight and my torchian, torchion. But certainly you could use a pit pen. And they come in gray, um, come gray. So you could use, you know, certainly use that to do that instead. So I'll just give you an example here. I could do some shading here along here. And just feather it out a little bit through that shading line. Um, there's also a line of pens that, uh, who makes it? Tombow. Tombow makes a line of gray pens. They're value pens, so they're from black all the way to near white, and they come in a set. And you can use that for shading as well. They're really, really good. Okay, so I will try to get the um, announcements there. And actually what I'll do, when, if you go to the Tangle um, Tuesday Facebook page, so you just type in the search thing, Tangle, Tangle Tuesday, and join it, I'm going to post them there. Okay, I'll post them there after the class. All right, and if you don't get that for whatever reason, send me an email and I will send you photos. Sound good? Everybody ready to go on to the next one? Anybody need more time? Okay, if you need more time, raise your little hand there and we'll give you more time, but I think we're okay. All right, so let's do a zigzag design. So I'm going to start on this one. And I'm going to start like this. Down here. I'm trying not to repeat the same ones that we've done. But 
sometimes I really like them. Okay. So, what we could do, I'm going to start in the one that's a complete one, and we're just going to do a curved line and coming down. So that's three curved lines coming down. And I'm going to do the next one the same. Okay, so we have this configuration. I'm going to turn it over and give you some options for the bottom. You can do the same thing again, just the curved lines going the other direction. Or you could put a little dot in there. You could aura that line and maybe put a dot, another circle in there. You could black it in and leave a little shine if you wish. We do another little triangle inside. You could do some vertical lines. So just give yourself permission to experiment. You can do them all the same or different. It's up to you and how you feel. You could also do a little tipple in there. Okay, we're all heads down a little bit still, so I'm gonna give you a few more minutes to catch up. And then we'll do the uh, writing portion. And you can leave that blank and put it in later. You don't have to do it tonight, don't feel pressure. But I'll show you an easy way to make letters. An artful way to make letters without too much difficulty. So I'm going to start. I'm going to put it right in here. I'm going to use my pencil first. But if you are good at, at printing, and you want to go right with your pen, you're welcome to do so. My word's quite long, so I want to start quite, you know, give myself enough word, what's the word? Give myself enough room, okay? So I'm going to do 
the word is endurance. And though my mother misquotes the person who came up with it, but she does say, what cannot be cured must be endured. And considering that she's 93 and she's lived through an awful lot, including polio pandemics and Spanish flu pandemics, I think she might know a little bit about what she's talking about. And having endurance to go the distance it's really important. I think it's something to, to share. Okay, so the word, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it on another piece of paper or down here. I'm gonna do it down here so you can see it better. So, so I've got my letters. I'm just gonna show you with a few. And the way it works is you're going at this, what you're looking for is on the downstroke or the side stroke is a shape like that, sort of like a toothpick. Okay, so on the downstroke of this one, I'm going to do this toothpick shape. And then coming out of this one, another toothpick shape. And then here. But if you don't, and if you don't care for this design of lettering, then you are welcome to do your own thing. But it's something that I, I like to do. So something like that, I'm gonna show you with this because the letters get smaller and then larger again. So I'm just gonna outline them in black first, give me an idea where I'm going. Flare it out the bottom, like bell bottoms. Kind of similar lettering that we did last week. I got that one somewhere, um, but a little different. So this is some, just so that you know, for people that weren't here last week, I'll show you the lettering that we did last week. I did this um, for my sister. I have yet to mail it. <laughs> Her birthday is really soon. <laughs> um, so maybe I should bail that tomorrow, but it's a little different. It's more flared out at the edge, a little narrower. So you're welcome to try that one as well, which is a lot of fun. So this is um, a book that I bought on Kindle. It's from a book on Kindle, pardon me, and it's called Artful, Artful Lettering. Let me look it up on my phone. I'll write in the comments, I'll write um, what it is. Go over to Kindle. Where are you, where are you, where are you? 
after everything you had too many apps. No, never. How could that be? Okay. Oop. Okay. Artful alf alf Artful Alphabets by Joanne Sharp. And I'm going to put that right in the chat. And uh, I one winter, a couple of winters ago, you'll just have to bear with my arm here in the way. I bought the book and I have, you know, have lots of sketchbooks. And I took my sketchbook, big ones, and I did every letter in here. And there's 30 some, 30 some styles that she goes through. Um, and it was really good because it was like, okay, what I like this, I don't like that. And I got to learn the different ways of, uh, of it's kind of a loose style of, of lettering. It's not the true calligraphy, you know, everything is in its place and a place for everything. It's very forgiving. And Rohini says, I think any who teaches a beautiful way of lettering. So if you want to put that in chat, any about that, and maybe you've got some classes or something coming up about lettering, that would be great. I'd like to hear that. So Anise says, I have two lessons on lettering. One is for tangled words and another one is just for really heavily, heavily ornate initials. So is that available on your website, Anise? That would be cool. And yes, there it is. Yes, it is. And there is her um, website address, Aini Oken and teach at teachable.teachable.com. So you can click on over that and learn from Aini some cool lettering styles, which would be fun. And I'm going to do that. Okay. So I don't know. Let's do a little show and tell for a minute. I'm going to put us on gallery view for me so I can see everybody and there's a lot of you. Just hold up your um, tile to the camera and see where everybody's at, please. Nice. Oh, look at these. They're so expressive. Oh, wow. Nice. Really, really beautiful. Oh, I see some words too. I see some beautiful words. Oh, wow. Thank you very much. That's really cool. Okay, I'm gonna go back to speaker view. And um, so to give you some ideas, what I like to do on the blank spot is I'll show you on this one and is to carry the color. So what I did was I put this orange around where the sail, sails are and I carried it up to these little gaps in here. See up there and over there. So it looks like a background color. So I did it on that one. And this is actually where I got this idea. So I was sort of thinking, what am I gonna teach this morning? Well, well and I forgot that and this is sitting on my desk. And I thought, oh, I'll do this. So this is more of the same idea with no words and so, certainly more tangles, uh, more um, ribbons of tangles, and then some 
going through some going in and out and being interwoven so that's another option but again I've got this orange color that pops out and you might want to think about what color you want to do around you know whether it's dark or light or if you want it to pop or not so it's I just I don't know I just really like them and I'm thinking um, and if you don't know this uh, there is something and I'll a lot of people do know about it now, but there's something called art abandonment. So it was started by a couple of art teachers who live in Vancouver, BC, in Canada. And they um, actually wrote a book on it as well, Art Abandonment. So it started, they were teaching a class. This is during the last recession and they couldn't sell much art. So they were teaching workshops and they taught a workshop in a hotel. and they thought we need to, you know, perk people up around here because it was, you know, a tough time. And so one of the artists took one of the demo paintings that she had done in the workshop and put it in an elevator in the hotel and just hit a button and then hopped out. Well, it turned out it was picked up by one of the staff and she was absolutely thrilled to have this original work of art. And they, they were over whelmed with the joyfulness that brought this woman and the people that she worked with and they thought well let's make this bigger so they encouraged other artists to leave art around um, so i've been doing it for a long time now and it's just a fun way so i just stick you know a zentangle in a ziploc bag and tie it to a tree or clip it to a tree with a closed peg and put on it this is free art and you're welcome to take it or give it to somebody else if you go to art abandonment they have a facebook site and you can do all sorts of stuff and yep lisa that's right random access and tangle same idea and it came from there um so yeah and that you know what so i i do and i put other forms of art in there. A lot of people leave painted rocks and jewelry and all that kind of stuff. So when they find, people find it, they can go to the Facebook site and they can write um, about how they found the art and when and why. And the stories that come out of it are very uplifting. Um, nowadays, this right now, you probably don't want anybody touching stuff. So maybe not a good thing to do now. I don't think anybody's gonna touch it. But you know, when this is all over, it's something to think about. Um, unless you put well sanitized on the outside, I'm not sure <laughs> what you're going to do. Or it comes with bleach, or it comes with a hand sanitizer. That's it. A little bottle of hand sanitizer with the artwork. <laughs> so anyway, that is really all I need to show you tonight. And I'm hoping that you will continue. Can you, I'll give you a few minutes. Um, Give you another, say, five minutes, and then we'll do a reveal to see where we are. And I'm going to also unmute you all if you want to talk um, while we're finishing up and while they're tangling, go right ahead. So I'm going to unmute all and you can just chat away, whatever you'd like to do, whatever you'd like to say. And I'll put you back onto gallery view. Thank you, Loretta, for teaching us. Oh, you're welcome. The classroom of kids at this point, they would all start screaming. <laughs> oh, yeah. They're spending a lot of time muted on Zoom these days. <laughs> Loretta, thank you very, very much. Oh, you're, you're welcome. welcome. You're welcome. So just so you know, you're welcome, Janet. Just so you know, um, the link I sent you will work for the next 
few classes. I think I've scheduled it till May 12th. I didn't know how long this is going to go. So May 12th seemed like a good date. Did you see it? Hi, Michelle. Hi, Uncle Paul. Hi, Avila. Hi, Ditto. <laughs> Oh, sorry. My daughter That's okay. got from her knees. She's all excited. Oh, nice. Oh, cute. But I wasn't on mute. Sorry. That's all right. No, it's fine. <laughs> Keeping it real. Yeah. That's all right. I know. It's cute. They've been sending each other stuff in the mail. Oh, oh. nice. No, that's nice. from my niece. That's from my niece. Yeah. Oh, nice. Well, my husband, um, he scored some yeast last week at the, our okay. local grocery store, and he just dropped it off at our friend's house, and he got butter tarts in return. He was really excited. <laughs> okay, is everybody ready to show us what you've done so far? I'm going to take a screenshot, so... Whatever you've done so far, you may not be ready. Whatever you've done so far, if you put it up to your camera, please, camera, please. Okay, Lisa, I need you to put it up there. I can see. I can see. Okay, I'm going to take a screenshot of this page. Hang on, and then I'm going to go to the next page. So keep holding them up there. And I'm gonna do this one. Thank you. That's fantastic. They're beautiful. Wow, the colors. Oh, they make my heart sing. Oh, that's fantastic. Anybody have any questions before um, we I go put my feet up? My feet up. Thank you. I do. I had a question about the the pit pens. Do they are pen? they uh, like a like a fine tip or what kind of tip are they? The pet the pit pens these pit ones pens, yeah yes, yeah the pit pens mm. are a brush tip. Um, okay okay we'll see. Are they, dual, are they dual are they dual ended? No. no okay they're not so they come either um, this one they come fine where is myself I can't see myself and. Um, I'll go back to speak reviews so I can see. Okay, so they come fine like that, mm -hmm. or they come brush. Oh, like okay. okay. Okay, and then you can get them in between too. So like this is a medium in black. So there's lots of possibility. Um, just go and have fun at the store. <laughs> Very cool. I, I'd like to make a comment about these. Um, there are many, many, many types of brush pens or pens or markers, and they will bleed through your calendar. Right. But these will not. That's so you right. can use these on your calendar and like the Adenta pen, don't even try it. Don't even think of it. It's yeah. so bleedy. It is bleedy. So yeah, these are, um, because they're India ink, and they're, you know, of all the inks, and I've done a lot of testing, they're waterproof though I've never stunk them under the water, <laughs> see if they swim, but they are certainly very light fast. A lot of um, markers are not very light fast. They say they are, but they're not. So these ones are quite light fast, all the ones that I've used, and I really, really do enjoy them. And they're not too expensive. A lot of them are crazy, so that's really good. I'm going to stop recording here. I don't forget.